Welcome to Symphony Workshop, I'm Gary Clark and in this recording I'm going to answer a common question regarding many-to-many -many relationships using Symphony Framework and Doctrine ORM. In a typical many-to-many -many relationship what you'll have is a join table which sits between two entity tables and it'll just contain two fields which are foreign keys that point back to those entities. But what if you want to store additional data such as the date time that the relationship was established? You can't actually do that with the typical many-to-many. -many. So that's what I'm going to cover in this one. I'm pretty sure that you'll find this information useful, if not now, but at some time in the not too distant future. Before we get into that, can I just say that this channel was created for you. So if you are signed into YouTube, please just take a second to answer this question in the comments down below. So housekeeping first, I record in high resolution so you don't need to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of Symphony developers and take your skills to a new level? If that's you, then all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon and welcome to the family. I'll start out the same way that I usually do by creating a new Symphony project and the way I do that is like this. Symphony new and give your project a name. And this will be the folder where everything gets dropped into so i'll call it many to many with data and i'm specifying that i want the symphony framework version 5.1 if you choose the same version as me then everything should work the same for you now i'm just moving into that folder and let's pull in our composer dependencies so i can do this like this composer require and i'm going to get the maker bundle i want doctrine i want annotations We'll just speed through that a bit. So that's all installed. Now I'm going to recreate my entities. So I'll do that using the maker bundle, which I just installed. And the way I can create entities is like this symphony console make colon entity. And so I'm going to create an interest group. I'm using the word interest group rather than group because group is a SQL keyword. And I'm just going to add a name property, which is a string, uh, not null. And then I'm going to also create a user entity. Again, this will just be one field just with a name because I'm not demonstrating like entity properties or anything like that. I'm demonstrating the relationship between um, entities. OK, so we now have an interest group and a user. In the previous many to many recording, we ended up with this. It was a join table between users and interest groups. But there was a problem with it, with doing it this way, because it meant that we only ended up with two fields, user ID and interest group ID, which just joined the two together. But what we want to do is have extra data. For example, we want to know what date the user joined the interest group, and there might be other pieces of metadata which will be of use to us. So that's what we're going to do here. So let's take a quick look at what the maker bundle has generated for us. As you can see, we have an interest group entity and it just has two properties, IDs created automatically and name we specified. Here is our user entity, pretty much exactly the same and we've given it a name property. What we're going to do now is create a third entity which will model that relationship. Try to think about the most meaningful name you can give to the association. So we have a user, the user is joining a group, let's call it membership. And we'll create a membership entity to model that relationship between the two. So this is what that's going to look like. As you can see, we've got our user on one side, we have an interest group on the other side, and down the middle we have our entity which is modeling that relationship. And you know what, I actually prefer this approach. By having that entity to model a relationship, it just feels a bit more object-oriented. So, as you can see at the bottom, we've got our foreign keys, member ID, which points to the user table, and interest group ID, which points to the interest group table. And then at the top, we have our additional fields that we're creating. So we have a created at date time, and we'll also have a level, as in like a level of membership. So another thing to think about using this is, when you create a many-to-many -many relationship, okay, you might not think you need 
these extra fields at the time but how do you know that requirements might not change in the future and you all of a sudden need to record additional data if you've gone down the route of creating the traditional many to many with just the two columns then you're going to be stuck with a problem so software development it's a big part of it is about managing change and i think one of the best ways to manage change is to anticipate it in the first place so when you do create your many to many just think, is this probably a better solution? We're going to use this membership entity to hold that additional information that we want to know about the relationship. So we'll have a created at property and that will be a date time, not null. And we'll have another property which will be level, i.e. like a level of membership. And so that will be not null also. Hit enter twice to come out of there and now let's go and check out our membership entity. So there's our properties, it gets given an ID automatically, created at and level and here's all our getters and setters for those properties. Now we want to think about how do we create this relationship to our two existing entities. Let's tackle interest group first and the way we do this is we create a many to one relationship between the membership and the interest group. So using annotations, I'm going to say many to one, many memberships to one interest group. So target entity equals interest group. And what we're saying is that an interest group can have many memberships. Then what this is going to do is generate a join column, which will be interest group ID. And we have to make sure that that is false because you can't have a membership without an interest group. For the user entity, we do exactly the same thing, but I'm not going to call it user. I'm going to call it member because that sounds more meaningful, a member of a group. And same relationship, many to one, many memberships to one user. So here I put target entity equals user. A user can have many memberships. And again, we are creating a join column using the join column uh, annotation and we specify that that is false because you can't have a membership without a user, obviously. What I want to do now is create my getters and setters for member and interest group. And I'll just get PHP Storm to do that for me. So I've got get interest group, set interest group and get member and set member. Pretty straightforward there. So just be clear on what owns what. The membership is the only side of the relationship with user and membership is the only side of the relationship with interest group. Let's now go and create the inverse relationships on those two entities. So in the interest group, what I'll do is I'll call the inverse of the relationship user memberships. Notice S there, this is plural because there will be more than one. It will be an array. And so what I'm doing here is using annotations to create a one to many relationship. Target entity is membership. And I want to specify that the relationship was mapped by the interest group property on the membership entity. Hope that's clear. If you have any questions, make sure you post them in the comments down below. Now going to go to the user. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. But we'll give this a different name. What we'll do is we shall call this group memberships. Again, plural, because this is going to be an array, an array of memberships which the user holds. And so same thing again, we're using annotations to say one user to many memberships. And we'll also add the same mapping, which will be mapped by the member property on the memberships or membership entity. I'm now going to generate migration files for all three entities at once. And the way I do that is by saying symphony console and it's doctrine migrations diff. Diff will look at your entities, look at your database, see what's different and create migration files from those differences. So interest group and user, pretty boring, nothing new there. What is interesting is the membership table and these two fields here, interest group ID and member ID. 
These were created using our relationship annotations. And looking a little further down our file, we see that interest group ID references the ID field on the interest group table and the member ID field references the ID field on the users table. Let's now go and make those changes permanent in our database and we do that with Doctrine Migrations Migrate. It asks, are you sure you want to do this? Just say yes. And so here's our interest group. We'll look at the structure. Okay, just two fields, ID and name. Same for user, membership. As you can see, we have our foreign keys. These reference the ID field on the interest group and user tables respectively. So quick click on the data tab. As we can see, database is currently empty. Let's now seek to change that. So the way we'll do this is we'll just create a basic controller and we'll stick all our logic in there, I think. So we'll call it app controller and we'll extend the abstract controller. Though I should point out I'm doing that more out of habit than anything. Um, your controls don't actually need to extend abstract control if you're not going to use any of its methods, which I don't think we are in this case. So I've created a uh, index method and I'm just going to inject entity manager interface into there. We'll need the entity manager in order to interact with um, Doctrine and the database. I'm using annotations to handle my routing, so I'll just use forward slash and I'll give that a name of home. So what do we need here? We're going to need an interest group. And we're also going to need a user. And then we're also going to create a membership to handle the relationship between the group and the user. All straightforward there. I hope that makes sense. Again, if you have any questions regarding this stuff, don't hesitate to um, post them in the comments down below. I answer all questions, queries, comments, etc. So here we go. Group equals new interest group. We need to set a name because the name was not nullable. And then all we need to do is just with the entity manager, persist the group. And we'll do the same thing with user. Uh, just create a bit of space for myself. And user equals new user. We've also got to set a name because we said that the name was not nullable. And we'll also need to persist this. Now remember, when you call Entity Manager Persist, you're not actually persisting anything to the database then. You just bring in the object under the Entity Manager's management. You only persist when you call Flush on the whole lot. So let's now create our group membership. So this will be a little bit more complex. Group membership equals new membership. And there's a few things we need to set here. So let's set the created app field and we'll just use the current date and we'll also need to set the level because we said that that's not nullable and we're just passing a random string which I don't like we need to have stricter control of this which we'll come to shortly and then what we need to do is add our relations and so all we do is to set the interest group we just pass the group in and to set the member, we just pass the user in. Again, Entity Manager persist. And then in order to really persist everything to the database, we call flush and that will create all three records. It'll create an interest group, a user and a membership. And then let's just have a bit of feedback that we can see in the browser once this executes. So over to the terminal, let's start up server. The way I do that is with symphony server colon start and the dash D means run this in the background so I get my terminal back and just paste that into the browser and let's see what we get. Great stuff, membership one created for user one and group one. Give our database tool a refresh and everything seems to have worked there. So I'll be inserting the database. Interest group ID, member ID, created at and level. Perfect. As a little bonus, let's look at how we can improve this. So set created at, 
do we actually need to be setting this every time can we automate that somehow we'll have a look at the membership entity and consider that and also set level don't want to be able to just pass in random strings like this need some control in real life i'm most likely to have a fixed array of levels and so that's what we'll try and create so first of all let's deal with this created at the way i'm going to do this is uh, it's quite a crude simplified version but i'm just going to uh, in the constructor set the created at property to the current date whenever an object is created and for the levels what i'm going to do is i'm going to initialize a private constant which will contain all the different levels of membership that there are so i'll just give this a name of membership level types and we'll keep it simple we'll just add three levels of membership standard better best no ambiguity there and the way we're going to enforce this is first we'll check if the level that is getting passed into the set level method can be found in our array of membership level types if it's not in the array what we'll do is we'll throw an invalid argument exception uh, we will choose the one from the global namespace uh, indicated by this backslash here and i'll just build up a message to say that your choice wasn't one of the available options let's go over to the browser and give that a whirl great stuff let's check out the database so as you can see the date has still been added let's now select a level which isn't in the list and there you go we've got this big ugly error which is good in this case uh, level must be one of standard better best perfect i'll just go back and make it work again because i don't like to end my recordings on an exception there we go that's working again and there we go level equals better so quick recap what did we do we created a membership entity to represent the relationship of a user to a group using a many to one to the interest group and a many to one to the user and in the database that created a mapping using foreign keys between interest group id and id on the interest group and member id and id on the user table so I hope that you found this one useful. I have enjoyed recording it for you. Be sure to give it a like if so, and don't hesitate to share if you want to help others like yourself. Help each other out, that's what this channel is all about. And also if you want to continue to learn Symfony and other related technology with me, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material twice a week, and details of my schedule can be found on the discussion tab on my YouTube homepage.